Bell & Howell Electric Eye. I wouldn't know what model camera this is if it didn't say it. Here, Perpetua. Perpetua. When you look on the front of the camera, you think there would be like a big banner that said Perpetua. Like right here, right, John? Yeah. This looks like something right out of the 1953 War of the Worlds. Other world. It's like it went through the, the Brundle machine. Now, this camera has a built in light meter that actually you can set to auto, A U T O, meaning all you do is point and shoot. This function may not work or may not be accurate because the camera is so old. The great thing about this camera is that it has a manual override if the automatic features don't work. Unlike the great trends of today, which everyone is looking for faster ISO, higher speed. Uh, these cameras actually do better with lower ISO film because they have a set shutter speed of 1 30th of a second, which means the lower the film speed, the ISO, the better. The FPP sells 40 ISO black and white or color film. So you would set this to whatever ISO film you have. In this case, let's say 40. Avoid old Kodachrome film. You may be tempted to buy that on ebay.com. The Kodachrome process is defunct and you would not be able to get your film developed. What do we have here? This is your frame counter. When you load your film, you will start at start and then it will trickle down right to end. The film used for this camera is called double eight film. Double eight film is 16 millimeter in width, which means you shoot both sides of the film in the camera. I will show you that in a second. Shutter button, runs your motor, or you can do single frame. Tripod mount on the bottom. Here is your eyepiece. Look through the back of the camera. You're not actually looking through the lens of the camera. There's no focusing with this camera. Everything is preset focus, I guess, which can be good. And what you have here are three lenses. You have your wide angle lens. Here you have your normal lens. In order to switch the lens to shoot, you actually lift this up and turn. T, telephoto lens. Great. Now, how do you know what you're shooting if you're not looking through the lens? The Crafty people at Bell & Howell Corporation, they have these guides on the eyepiece. When you're looking through the eyepiece, if you're shooting wide, W, which I always prefer, wide angle, everything in the eyepiece is covered. If you're shooting N... Everything that's green. In the green. Yes. See how the lens is green? <laughs> Providing you could see that's color. Green. This is yellow. This is yellow. <laughs> Etc. Thank you, John. And then T, telephoto, yellow the little so frame up what's ever in this little box here here you see a little red arrow and right now it's on a auto if you wanted to switch it from auto you would turn it to manual and as you turn it to manual do you john do you see this a little red thing little red thing yeah and if you look on top here are your f-stops f1.9 f4 f8 you would just turn this set your f-stop and start shooting most people myself included want to shoot a auto but in order to do that you have to make sure that the light meter works you have to test here's your light meter and this light meter indicator will change do you see that yep so that means that the light meter sensor is sensitive to light. So that means that this camera works, which is terrific. On this particular model, it says right here, filter, type A filter in or out. So I would suggest shooting without a filter. It's just not necessary in 2022. Okay, compartment, film compartment. I feel like I've been through this before. <laughs> Here we're going to load our roll of film. Two things, film, film is light sensitive and it has a set ISO. So if you bought our 40 ISO film, that's it. It's 40 ISO, the camera shoots at 1 30th of a second shutter speed. That's constant, nothing, it won't change. So that's very important to know if using a light meter to establish your exposures. If you're in full auto, A-U-T-O, great. Set it to 40, set it and forget it, as they say. Here is your take-up spool, which comes with your camera. Here is your film gate. So what happens is your film will be sandwiched between your pressure plate pressure. and the film gate. Look at that, right there. Here's your film, 16 millimeter in width. You'll be shooting the film twice. There'll be an eight millimeter image on either side of your film, side one, side two, and that all comes together in the magic in the magic process of development and scanning.
while you're shooting. Don't open the case. <laughs> don't open this. You know, once this is loaded, do not open this in broad daylight. You will flash all of your film. All right, so here we have the film. Only loads one way. The lighter side is your emulsion, your light sensitive part. It always faces the lens. The other side is your shiny base. Goes one way on the post. Very, oh boy, very nice. Goes behind here. Sandwiched between the pressure plate and the film. Pressure. Gate. Right there, that goes there like that. Look at that. Now you have to make sure your film is properly placed in your camera. And right now it's not. Oh, now it is. You see that? Your film is lying flush underneath these two plates. Close your pressure plate. Pressure. And if you want to do a little test with this open as you're in your first load it, you will just, uh, sh you know, shuttle a few feet ahead. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, terrific success. So what you do is you put your camera, your film compartment plate on. Great, that's sealed. Uh, this is what you do to wind your camera so that your camera can run. This camera takes no batteries. Amazing. Wind up your camera until you feel like the, you know, you feel it's tight. I have a, a just a test roll in here, so it's very short. So we'll be able to get through side one immediately. Once you're done shooting side one, you will need to flip your film and shoot side two. Now remember, the way you will know what's going on in your camera is here. This is your, your original camera spool that came with your camera. This will always be empty when you're done fully shooting your roll. So you just shot side one, open up the gate, take the film out, flip it, take what was your full roll that is now empty, take it out, flip it. Now you do the same thing. You load the film onto the empty roll. Terrific. You put your film on the post. You thread it in between the gate and the pressure plate. Pressure! Put your take up here. Terrific. Make sure the film is set behind in the film gate properly. Close it. Roll off a few feet. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Seal it up. Make sure your camera is all nice and wound. And now you will shoot side two. Once you're done shooting side two, you remove your back. And now we're back to the beginning. All of your film is back on the original, open the gate, original spool, ready to go to the lab. You take your film, put the rubber band back around it, put it in the black bag or tin that it came with, and hopefully send it to the film photography project for developing and scanning. You take your take up spool and you just put it back where it was, flip it, and now you're ready for your next big adventure. We'll see you next time. <laughs>